Hey guys, Nick here, and uh, I'm going to give you a review for Justice League Throne of Atlantis, the new DC cinematic uni uh, cinematic animated film, uh, which comes out soon, but uh, I got to see it uh, a little early. Uh, I'm not going to say how, but uh, right off the bat, I'm just going to go out and say that I really enjoyed the movie. Um, I definitely think it is the strongest out of the new uh, DC animated films that they're going for, this New 52 route they're going with it. Uh, I definitely thought it had um, really great pacing, uh, great character moments, and a really touching story, uh, in my opinion, in terms of, uh, you know, what Arthur has to go through, and we really get to see that uh, in a num uh, number of scenes. Uh, we get to see him, his humanity come through, and I really, really enjoyed that. Uh, aspect of it. I hope they do that in the live action feature with Jason Momoa. I really hope they do that. Um, but one thing I want to do uh, also mention is that uh, Cyborg has a really uh, big role in this. I mean, not in terms of like game change or anything, but uh, he had a lot um, bigger role than he did in the previous films. And um, they really get across this point that uh, it's a guy that really can't cope with being half man, half machine. Uh, you know, he. He really wants to pretend that he's still a man, but, you know, there's a lot going against that, obviously. And uh, I really enjoyed that. I thought it was pretty, you know, uh, emotional. And uh, I also love the characterization of Green Lantern in this film. I'm really glad that Nathan Fillion came back to do the voice work for that because, I mean, in my opinion, he is the Green Lantern. I mean, just like Kevin Conroy is Batman, Nathan Fillion is definitely the Green Lantern. And, um, too bad he's a little bit old to play him in live action. That'd be pretty awesome. But yeah, um, going back to the film itself, uh, I, I'm i just going to say I'm not familiar with the Throne of Atlantis storyline. Uh, I obviously have heard of it, and I've heard that it's incredible, but I have not read that uh, story arc uh, from Justice League. I just haven't got around to it. I, I don't know. I've been kind of out of the loop with the New 52 Justice League stuff. i am caught back up with Injustice League on issue 30, but I did miss out on that uh, story arc, but uh, in terms of how they handled the arc in the film, I don't know, but uh, as a film, I thought they did a great job with it. I mean, it was a really simple story of, uh, you know, the the two brothers, one's half human, half Atlantean, and the other one is like this pure guy, he just hates the surface world, and uh, people will probably compare this to the Thor-Loki relationship, it's very similar. But uh, I thought they handled it pretty well in this film, you know. Uh, uh, the only problem that I guess I would have with it is that the story needed to be a little bit longer. Um, you know, it's tough in these animated movies just because they're working with about 70 minutes running time. Um, maybe 80 sometimes, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's difficult, you know. They have to cram a lot of stuff into this movie. And, uh, you know, some storylines get kind of sidelined, they get pushed to the side, and... Um, you know, they don't really have a lot to breathe with, so um, it's tough making these animated movies, but I, in terms of what the story they did get across, I thought it was pretty good. You know, uh, they have great action in this movie, uh, really cool action, and I'm glad that they're going, like, full-on PG-13 adult with this stuff. Uh, you know, you see people's heads get cut off and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> that was cool. We got to see the trench in here, the trenchians or whatever they call them. That was really cool. And, um, you know, just stuff like that was awesome. Um, obviously, the animation style is completely the same as what they've been doing. Uh, it's consistent with that. <clears throat> and I think, you know, the character models are pretty cool. I like what they did with Aquaman. Obviously, there's not much changes they did to him, but, you know, they're going to stick closely as they can to the New 52 design of the characters. Um... Uh, it seemed like in this film, each member of the League did have a lot to do, and that was good. You know, the only character that I saw that didn't really get a whole lot to do is Shazam, or uh, Captain Marvel, however you want to call him. Uh, he didn't really get a whole lot to do, but uh, I thought it was, his role was funny. Uh, you know, he had the little quips in there and stuff like that. But uh, overall, uh, oh, also I'm going to mention that this film does have an after credit scene which is something cool that they've been doing, and I'm not going to spoil it, because I want you guys to see what it is, uh, it's pretty cool, and it's obviously going to be probably setting up a future Justice League uh, film, so yeah, I really enjoyed the film, and uh, hopefully when you guys get the chance to see it, you'll like it too, but I recommend at least renting it or picking it up, uh, if you're a fan of Aquaman, it was pretty cool, and uh, yeah, 
So uh, that's all we have for today, and uh, go check out this uh, animated feature, and I'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, uh, you know, subscribe if you haven't yet. Like the video if you liked it, obviously. Share it on social media. Speaking of social media, we have a Twitter, so follow us on Twitter. We have a Facebook, so like us on Facebook. You know, we do a lot on the social medias that we don't do on YouTube in particular. And we'll see you guys next time.